Um, I greet you. My name is Sipo Edgar Nubes or Edgar Sipo Nubes. That's how it appears on my ID. Um, so today I would just like to cover a theory lesson or yeah, theory lesson on rates of reaction. Um, um, this context or is basically or mainly for high school but it will probably benefit university students as well um, a good foundation a good reminder before you get into more advanced stuff but without wasting any more time let us begin so let me just start the slideshow from beginning okay so as you can see here chemistry rates of reactions that's my name so before we do anything before we delve into this topic let us discuss what is the study of the rates of reaction so when we studying rates of reaction we are studying the rate at which reactions occur in other words we are studying how fast it reacts uh, reactants will form products or how fast products will reform reactants basically how fast the reaction happens so that's what the study of rates of reactions is and um, collision theory basically explains or gives a a, a, a microscopic model or idea of how um, reactions happen so from the collision theory um so from the collision theory what may be known is that reactions result from particle collisions and uh, and you must also understand that not every particle collision forms a reaction it's only the collisions which we refer to as effective collisions and effective collisions are collisions of particles that have sufficient energy and particles which collide in the correct orientation. So for effective collisions to occur, particles must collide with sufficient energy and particles must, um, particles must collide with the correct orientation. So that's what, that's what we need for um, reactions to happen. We need particles to collide with effective collisions. So that's basically our brief overview in the collision theory um, to explain briefly how reactions happen. So you might also ask, why do we study the rates of reactions in chemistry? Well, I can put it this way. It's more of a management um, aspects of chemistry I put it that way because you want to manage your reactions and what I mean by you want to manage your reactions is you want to know how long it will take a reaction to happen in other words how long you your a certain reactant you have will take to form a specific product and in and also you would want to know if it happens you'd also want to know what is slowing a reaction down Perhaps your a reaction is happening slower than it should. You see, it's management. So you want when you perform a specific experiment, you want to have a background knowledge about it, an estimate of how long should this reaction take me. Because if it takes you longer than expected, or if it it happens too fast compared to what is known in the literature, or what is what is is known about the experiment then you would, you can figure out that something went wrong so that's basically why we study reaction ra rates of reactions to know um, how fast the reaction will happen or figure out if a, if a reaction slows down or speeds up too fast what what is causing that and we can manage that accordingly so that the reaction happens as it should okay so we'll be moving right along now we are going to look at um, our topic of rates of reactions. But before we begin, 
let's lay the foundation. The foundation of um, rates of reactions is basically a reaction itself. And a reaction is formed by a reaction mixture. So what I mean by reaction mixture, it's basically a system containing reactants, which is all these chemical products this side and the product which is all the chemicals that side and these chemicals that form the reactants and the chemicals that form the products they are called the reaction species you can refer to them as reaction species so AC is a reaction species B is a reaction species A is a reaction species CB is a reaction species so now what you must know for a reaction to occur there's a minimum amount of energy that is required for an, a reaction to occur and that energy is referred to as the activation energy the activation energy is a minimum amount of energy that is required to the activation energy is a minimum amount of energy that is required to um, for a reaction to occur so um, if a, if a reaction must happen the products must have enough energy to form I mean the reactants must have enough energy to form products or products must have enough energy to reform reactants so if the if there is enough energy for a reaction to occur in other words if the activation energy is overcome then the reaction occurs and throughout the reaction progress what we will have is a high energy transition state that is unstable and that high energy transition state that is unstable is referred to as the activated complex so the activated complex is represented here and the activated complex is as we said the high energy transition state it can it can go either way so a reaction can go f forwards from reactants to products or products to reactants which is backwards so that there the transition state can go either way it can form new bonds and form products or it can break bonds and 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 have products reforming into reactants so that's the transition state and 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 and, and as we have said that the reaction can go forwards or backwards uh, if you want to study um where the reaction goes forward or backwards it's a different um, study of chemistry called chemical kinetics where we study whether a uh, uh, chemical reaction goes forward and backwards and I believe you will cover that in your chemistry course along with this okay so I didn't show you the activation energy on this graph energy diagram so the activation energy how you will always see it it's on this graph it's the it's from the reactants it's from the reactants to the activated complex so this is we can call it an energy diagram energy here in joules and this is reaction progress it's arbitrary no units so so activated complex is just it's from the reactants to the high energy state here and the activation energy is the energy um, you it's energy f uh, from you you find it on this energy diagram by looking at from the energy of the reactants up until the energy of the activated complex that gives you the activation energy okay now the next quantity we want to talk about is the heat of reaction the heat of reaction which is represented by delta H is basically the um, heat of reaction here which is represented by delta H it, it, it is the energy difference between the, en the energy of the product and the energy of the reactant and that we have mathematically written here this is the definition of the heat of reaction it's the energy of the product minus the energy of the reactants and the um, activation uh, the heat of reaction allows us to define two types of um, 
reactions, endothermic reactions and exothermic reactions. Endothermic reactions are reactions that absorb energy and in endothermic reactions what you have is that the energy of the products is greater than the energy of the reactants and so the heat of reaction is positive because the energy of the product is greater than the energy of those reactants then this would be a positive number so the heat of reaction is positive and exothermic reactions exothermic reactions are reactions that release energy they have the in exothermic reactions the heat of reaction is negative because the energy of the reactants is greater than the energy of the product okay so we've covered the activation energy the activated complex and the heat of reaction now we want to talk about catalysts so what is a catalyst so a catalyst is a some are substances which are are used in chemical reactions to speed up um, the rates of chemical reactions and they speed up the rates of chemical reactions without participating in the reactions themselves they are like I would call them spectator reaction species because they don't participate in the react in the reaction itself they don't affect which products or reactants are formed and in what quantity they only speed up or slow down the reaction and how and 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 how these catalysts work is they provide an alternative route for the reactions to occur and in that the alternative route for the reaction to occur that and that alternative route has a lower activation energy that's what this energy diagram is showing us remember we have energy here in joules and reaction progress or reaction coordinates and without the catalyst we see that this graph here shows us a higher the activation energy would be higher because you would draw a dotted line here and from here to there it's a greater distance than from here to there so in this dotted energy um, graph with the catalyst which is representing the reaction with the catalyst has a lower activation energy than the one without the catalyst which has a high activation energy so catalysts work by uh, by lowering their activation energy and and that's how they speed up the rate of reaction so the the catalyst it what it does it 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 forms part of the activated complex and when the activated complex decomposes the catalyst is of course freed or released and it is released unchanged so any in a reaction mixture or reaction system the catalyst it, it it remains unchanged it it is released in the same way as which it came in because it only speeds up the reaction so there are two types of cl of classes or or types of catalyst heterogeneous catalysts and homogeneous catalysts homogeneous catalysts are catalysts that are in the same phase as the reaction species in other words if you're working with solids in your reaction then your catalyst would also be some form of a solid or if you're working with solutions a catalyst would also be solution so that's homogeneous catalyst but catalysts can also be heterogeneous catalysts in which the which are catalysts that are not in the same phase as the reaction species so your reaction species may be solution and your catalyst may be a solid and yeah so they're very important for for um, speeding up reactions that's basically what they're for speeding up re the reactions without being affected or changed themselves or participating in the reaction so we want to look at the many factors that affect reaction rate and i've written here cancer to cape town because that's a mnemonic I want to share with you. It's a mnemonic I've been using since high school. And I still use it today when I think about factors that influence the reaction rate. So cancer to Cape Town. That's how you pronounce it. So CA stands for catalyst. Capital N stands for nature reactants. SA here stands for surface area. 
capital C stands for concentration, P stands for pressure, T stands for temperature. So let's briefly discuss these. So we said the catalyst speeds up the rate of the action by lowering that or by providing an alternative route for the reaction to occur which has a lower activation energy. So the nature of the reactants also determines the rate in which a, rea a reaction will occur. So the nature of the reaction reactants is referring to whether the reactants are solid or solution state or whether the reactants have very strong covalent bonds or very weak covalent bonds. Surface area also affects the re reaction of the re re uh, the rate of the re reaction. For example, if you have um, a solid substance and if you take a part of that solid substance and you crush it or ground it into a powder, the powder form of the substance will react much quicker than the solid state form of the substance because um, the powder has more surface area exposed for reaction because I would like to make this analogy with you if you take an A4 paper and you crumble it up into a small ball it has a limited surface area available but a flat open um, A4 paper has um, great surface area available so it's like that as well if you have um, a solid state of a substance it's it's has very limited surface area to react but when you crush it or ground it into a fine powder it has more surface area to react and and particles collisions are more probable and that's how the rate of reaction is increased in a, that's how the rate of the reaction is increased in the um is increased in the yeah that's how the rate of reaction is increased so concentration the concentration um so the concentration increases the rate of the reaction so if you have a higher concentration you will have a high rate of reaction because if you have a higher concentration of a solution or a gas then there are more particles per cubic decimeter of that gas or solution so there are more the higher probability of particle collisions and higher rate of reaction how can we in, so how does pressure increase the rate of reaction if you increase pressure of a gas then you squash the particles together and that increases the probability of particle collisions and that's how the rate of reaction is increased how do we increase the rate of reaction with temperature temperature increases the kinetic energy of the particles of a substance and so they move faster and the probability of the rate of reactions is also increased so quickly before we close calculating the rate of reaction the average rate of the reaction is the number of moles of the reactant used divided by the reaction time or you can also use a product the average rate of a average rate of reaction is the number of moles of product formed divided by the reaction time so of course you'd be working from a reaction with products on one side and reactants on the other side and you can work depending on the information you've been given you can work out the average rate of reaction you can work out the number of moles using these expressions which you, have, you should be familiar with this marks the end of our lesson today thank you for watching i hope this was helpful